one quick thing. What's your one quick thing? I want you to just, the, the, how is the world going to react to the car wash once it happens? Which car wash? The first, the first episode of the car wash scene. When, what, you know, what outlet are you at? Black Tree TV. Okay, so I can tell the truth? Yes. Okay, so you know, uh, this car wash was designed to feel like, like pussy feels. It's wet, it's clean, it's moist, it gives you life. You're in the middle of the pandemic, and I think Uncle Clifford, for real, for real, is being witty and creative in how to stay afloat during this pandemic. So, you know, we all come from there, so sometimes you got to return for a fee. Deep. It is. Which is like can you make that it? too. Can you? <laughs> he missed that one, y'all. He missed that one, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We did not. We supposed to open up next week. You didn't change it to fucking them all. If you're mad the opening's gonna be on your birthday oh, weekend. Oh, fuck my 40th. Don't nobody care about that. The pink just ain't ready to open her legs just yet. She in need of a douche bad, child. Plus, we ain't got no DJ. The big L CD's got us through pussy land. Oh. Let him be the DJ. Child, I would rather put Ernestine in plastic and put her on the mic. You just gonna have to boo today. If we don't start stacking money now, we gonna find ourselves taking Corbin up on his offer. Is that what you want? You know where we are and why we are where we are. So I suggest you follow my lead. Heffa, you might be the owner, but you ain't the boss. You high step your yellow tail up in here on some flogging ass, perpetrating ass, fake ass shit and scammed up. Round of applause, bitch. But you better recognize which bitch gets the most applause well, round here. You like the applause so much, oh. maybe you should fucking DJ. Oh. Seem like that the only thing you good at is running your mouth instead oh. of running this club. Ooh. You know what you know. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. You know what you know what you know what. <laughs> you know what you know. Mm -mm. Hmm. You know what. <sighs> I'm too much of a cat to be fucked by a kitten. <sighs> Yo. What's up, man? First, like. Do you do you have bars? I mean, first, are you are you are you? I mean, I know you got a you you got, yeah. you got a role right here, but yeah. I mean, do you really are you really gonna drop some albums? Hey man, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an actor, you know. I'm a musician as well. I'm a drummer, but you know, I used to freestyle back in the day, man. You know, cafeteria with the homies, but I, I think if I really had to get in there, I could drop something because I have a good time doing it. And it comes natural for me, man. I feel like in that one episode where you where you pull out like the pots and stuff, and you kind of freestyle the music that you're really representing for like the South people that's in the marching bands and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Like how, how, how does it feel to like represent Mississippi and like to have these people that haven't had really stories on a national level tell their story? How does it feel to like have a character that brings out some of that? Man, it just feels amazing to be able to represent, you know, for one, the South in that way, but also like street performers. I came up in New York for a long time, street drumming every day to make a living. And so the fact that Katori allowed me to use those same pots and buckets and pans to make that happen, you know, I got to go holler at my homie style, you know, over here. But thank you, bro. But to be able to Katori to give me that opportunity, it means the world to me. Man. All right. Good to one, see one word about the, the car wash scene. Just what, what, what's, what's the world going to think when they see episode one in that car wash scene? Oh, they're going to lose their mind, man. They ain't ready for that. Come on, pretty baby. Nah, you too. Nice to meet you. I'm coming. What's up? I'm trying to stay. Time to rise and shine. I was like, hey, that you? No. It's LaMarcus. Who? Lil Murder. Oh, oh, child. I like that better. I call you that. Damn, you clammy as hell. <coughs> Let's get some food, eh? Uh-uh. That chicken and dressing clever, man. Gonna take me before that Rona do. That's why I whipped you up something special. Yeah. Oh. Smother Pope Shop. Mm. Candy yams. Mm -hmm. mm. Collard greens and mm -hmm. cold bread. <laughs> Folks saying they lose it, but I guess you still got your sense of smell. Oh, baby. That's all the sense I got left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, Chef Negro D. <laughs> I'll see you. Well, I ain't to please. Well, you better not please too much, because an old bitch might get used to having you around. Oh, uh, bitch, I just didn't quit flirting with me now. I ain't the bitch I'm talking about. <laughs> might need to put a good word in for me with Cliff then. Mm -hmm. Well, you keep cooking like that, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling. 
I'm here with Ms. Harriet DeFoy, and I mean, we got so many similarities. I mean, I got my grandma in New Bern, North Carolina. I was born in Brooklyn. We might be related. We're cousins. New Bern and Brooklyn. I went to yes. PS46. Uh, you know, I went to Boys and Girls. Oh, okay. I'm from Brownsville, though. Okay, we were right on um, 154 Washington Avenue. Yes, we, cousins, we family. <laughs> I got people at Craven Terrace and everybody. We got... lived on Second Avenue and then they moved over to uh, uh, Simmons Street. Come on in. Look at that. Live on Queens back in the day. How about that? But you, you playing a, a such a such a such a layered role as as, as this pastor in this in this show, balancing the voice of the conservatives and this relationship with your daughter. Uh, how does it feel to have a complex character like that in a story that is real complex with a black showrunner and, and creator? Like, how's that? Well, as an actor who's been in the business for some years and doing so much theater, it's like an honor, a blessing. It's like a kind of dream role you wait to play that has so many layers, so many colors, a character that people love to hate. And then you have to find what is human about her. How can you play her? What What are those things? What are the ends? Of, what, what makes her act the way she does? And I think that's the part. That's the beauty of it. And that's the challenge as the actor for me to find out. So many HBCUs, HBCUs represent. How would you know? <laughs> I know you're a bison and it's everything. So how, I mean, you can't take us how, how does it feel now to look around and see that there are so much HBCU alumni on the screen doing their thing, representing? Well, I have two sisters with me tonight. I mean, you can't go anywhere. HBCUs are the best. They produce the best. The talent, talented doctors, nurses, actors, everything you want. Yeah. It's a family. Like we are at Howard, fine, fine arts. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Like our set is beautiful. It's a beautiful time. We come together. We have so much fun. It's love. It's family. And I mean, y'all really play the story of what's going on with the pandemic when y'all doing the giveaways and everything else. Uh, I'm glad that y'all could represent and represent all these layers of what our culture is doing in different places and represent a lot of people's feelings in this in the show. Thanks for your performance. Thank you so much. It's our honor. It's our pleasure. We love our fans, and we can't wait to engage with them on Twitter. It's everything, because they are funny as hell. When they see that car wash scene. Babe, no. All this. I, you, there's so much. There's so much. I'm so interested to, to watch it with them tonight. I am so. It's so crazy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, cousin. Thank you, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal Finkley. I want to honor the future of this town and y'all's partner. Now, I know there's lots going on, but we got to get it going on for Chuck and Lisa. <laughs> yes, Lord. Is that going to be your campaign slogan? Yeah. Enter America. We got to get it going on for Chuck and Lisa. Well, I, I can only do that with the help of y'all. There are a few referendums on the ballot. Oh, yes, yes. One of them being for that casino. Yes, Pastor Woodbine, I think you know that one very well, since you're the only reason why it's even on the ballot. Well, the only reason you on the ballot is because a man's dead. But I digress. Yes. How you doing, Shannon? I'm here with one of the stars of the show and the stage and everything else. I mean, you, you turn it up. How does it feel to see season two, see these characters grow and develop and have different arcs now and like to get to know more of them. How does it feel to be a part of that? I know it was exciting to be in season one, but now I get to even unfold more stuff in this season. And that's what's that's what's great about having a second season of a show because the first season you're you're introduced to the characters and then the second season now that everybody knows who everyone is, like they're all established, you get to really dive deeper into the storyline and that is where the fun is. Um, I just, I'm really, really grateful to have someone like Katori Hall trust me with just playing a character with so many colors and layers and, and, and really allowing me to show my range. So you, Keyshawn takes you on this journey this season. So it's a lot of backstory on your character this season. A lot season, of backstory, but, for sure. Uh, like when you, I asked this to uh, one, of your, one of your castmates, but when you get into it season one, do you know, like, a lot of the backstory that ends up being revealed in the in the story? Is it done in the writers' room? Do you know a lot? Did you know about a lot about Kreishan, um that 
that, that they're revealing this season? Did you know that last season, like as far as back? Um, Katori will give you bits and pieces, but I had no idea. Like this season, you'll see how Keyshawn was raised, like how she was brought up, and and her family's income, like her her the her social what is it socioeconomic status. Yeah. I thought she was brought up completely differently, so that's something that was very surprising to me. Um, and, and Derek as well. You'll, you'll definitely get to see some things there that are a surprise to the fans and that were also a surprise to me. Yeah. I think episode one is a huge surprise just with the car wash and everything else. I can't wait till everybody sees. Insane. <laughs> It was so creative because I wasn't there for it. I hadn't shot it. So when I had seen it, like you read the script and it's one thing, but to actually see it, it is, it's beautiful. But at the same time, you're just like, it's, it's jarring too. Like, whoa, somebody's going to, if you're smart, somebody's going to like recreate that for real. Because yeah. that's, that's a money going to be on Crenshaw right. next week. <laughs> Crenshaw. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. That book is city. What's up, my sippy cups? We at Camay's. Beauty Supply in Jackson, the reveal of my Mississippi lashes. Available at a camera's near you. And for all my stands that's in the house, you can catch me and Lil Murder in the flesh. A club volcano tomorrow night. The Dirty Dozen tour going dummy. Woo! <laughs> 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 Poke that shit on the ground. Hey, yeah. How you doing? I'm chilling. Stone Mountain representing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I got somebody from that 770 right here on the carpet. Yeah, you got that, man. How you doing, man? Like, how, this this season, I mean, you got, this is an interesting change from uh, the last time uh, that the audiences were familiar seeing you on, on Zoe. Now you're like, you ex-con, bodyguard, all this stuff going on. How's it just to, like, have that broad of different characters to play as actors? I mean, that's that's what I live for. Like, live for that. Like, I love characters that are complex, that are different. I want to span experiences that are like mine and not like mine. I think that's the test of what we do. And I, I think of a lot of actors that I respect and admire, you get to see them evolve and transform and shape shift and, and become what's necessary to tell the story. And I think that in the ways that I could, I did that with Big Teak. Yeah. I feel like Katori used you to kind of tap into a lot of the anger um, and stuff that the community was feeling from George Floyd to Brianna, whatever. You kind of felt like you was the most passionate about and feeling that in this in this story. I mean, did you feel like you was a, a vessel for for like a message right there? I did, yeah. I think that, that like everything exists inside of this canvas, right? Victoria did a beautiful job of creating the canvas of what we are experiencing. You know, there's a there's a numbness to certain things. Like we see ourselves brutalized all the time, all the time, and you get to see the way that all of these other characters were inundated with that all the time. How they're like kind of numb to it in a certain way. But Teak, because of where he's been, he's fresh. And if we all remember what it was like the first time we saw something like that, we understand where he's coming from. We know what that is. And like, and that tapping into that, it did feel like. I did feel like there was a message. I felt like there was something that she, Katori wanted to say, and I'm grateful that it came through him. Yeah. I, I gotta, I gotta ask about episode one, this this car wash scene that everybody's gonna love. Like, why are we having these car washes all over the place? Oh, uh, 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 why, are, why are these type of car washes that P Valley? Like, they should just call it the P Valley car wash. I don't know. I don't know. Just my side idea. I don't know. P Valley Car Wash. Um, they're gonna put that into season three. There you go. There you go. No, I, yeah, I think that car washes are cultural. They mean something for us, right? Yeah. They, it's, it's if you go to certain people, you go to certain spaces, and you say talk about a car wash, yeah, nothing comes to mind. Yeah. You come to us, you talk about a car wash. It's community, yeah. and that's like the way that we gather around certain activities. That is an activity that we all gather around. So it's. Yeah, that's how I feel about that, yeah. yeah well, appreciate your time, brothers. Appreciate you. Take care. Stone Mountain, yeah. I'm, the, I'm Decatur, so I was the cab. Oh, you know. Decatur? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got your keys, bro. Yeah, nigga finna lay his crown at them pier for the first time in life. 
<laughs> After we slide through that pond, I'ma hit that slab hard. <laughs> Wait, hold, 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 no, 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 no. Y'all niggas can't slide, man. Damn, nigga, it's like that? You motherfuckers better be glad I even used that blue guar clout to get you these damn rooms. Cause if it was up to Wody ass, y'all be staying at the Super 8 and goddamn Kanye's. Where the fuck is Kanye's? Exactly, nigga. Man, I don't know what the fuck <laughs> this nigga talking about. Look, I done done enough of y'all niggas, man. Shit. Don't nobody you need your goddamn charity. Oh, 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 okay. Take fuck okay. you talking about? Okay. Nah, shit, dude. fuck. Well, give me my shit back then, man. You, uh, your old ungrateful ass nigga. Ungrateful? Oh, my bad. The five-star bed over there too soft for your back, huh? Because a nigga like you, you on a prison cot, huh? Keith, when you get through playing with these clowns, man, you slide on through. Broke ass, nigga. How you doing, bro? You don't got you don't got the gold tooth right now. You ain't you ain't got. That's what I said. I, you should, I, I, you should have rocked it, bro. I left out the house and I'm like, I should have put in my damn gold teeth. Man, I should have represented for the pink, the pink possum. <laughs> but now <laughs> we, we, I, I got my purple, uh, my pink purple custom suit. So you know, yeah, still, I'm, I'm still in there. Right? Yeah. I mean, how much of how much of the wardrobe did you just pull out your closet? Or was, was this all stars? Oh, tell me I don't say. Yeah. Oh, man, we had one of the best wardrobe uh, and costumers ever, bro. I wanted to take everything that touched my body, everything that I wore in the, in the, in the, in the rehearsal that they didn't use. I'm like, well, let me get that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's real. They Gucci, Louis, Fendi, Prada, everywhere you go. They, 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 they ain't playing. P-Valley is the real deal. So as, as a manager, did you take some, like, did you, was, was, did you take some cues from, like, a Shook or... Diddy, like which side was? Right. I'm Suge, I'm Diddy, I'm 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 I'm, I'm Tip, <laughs> doing things expeditiously, yeah. talking to people crazy, you know, thinking I could come get these country buckets. I'm from the city, they ain't got nothing, you know. It's just a blessing to be able to uh, represent my southern culture, my my heritage. You know, what I mean, I'm from Atlanta, so being able to be on set and speak with that vernacular yeah. and not hide it where I do in other movies and you gotta hide your draw. It was a breath of fresh air. Big shout out to Katori Hall, creative genius, my guy. Speaking of creative genius, I've been telling, I've been sneak peeking a little bit to everybody, but that first episode of Car Wash, I know you've seen him now. How crazy is that? And why don't we got that on uh, Wesley Chapel or Moreland Avenue or something out there? I'm like, telling you, on? look. Look, drive through, get you a car wash. Look, be on Stuart Avenue, little so. rubby bub bub and a tubby tub. That's a, a brilliant idea. Sexy girls washing cars. I think it's gonna pop up in Atlanta, though. Come on, Atlanta's a home. If, if not, me and you can get together. We can put one out. We need one in LA too. I think that'll work in every city. For sure, for sure. All right, well, man, uh, I mean, great, great. Uh, Great being a part of this season. I, I love everything I've seen. Can't wait to everybody else see it and uh, see everything you, just, you got going on. This is it, bro. This is black excellence. Look look at us. Look at everybody here. You know what I'm saying? The show's created by black people, written by black people, starring black people. We telling our black stories. It don't get no better than this, man. This is authentically black. This is this is, this is is black excellence. P-Valley. We're on it. Next time I see you, I want to go tooth, though, man. I'm, oh, I'm, I might have... Shit. I'm gonna be looking like Trinidad James, man. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna be all slow. All right, bro. Lose, bro. You from, you from, what part of A are you from? I'm from the Cayley. Cali Park. Cali West Side, man. You know. You got rolling out? I got, I got love for the East Side, though. You know. Yeah. <laughs> we got got I'm here with Moza Town. I mean, we, she just, she just, she just killed it. On on uh, snowfall, and now she's over here. Another character killing it again this season. Great to see the the, the, the mixture of characters. How does, how does it feel to like expand on your on your talents and everything else? Thank you. Um, whoo, snowfall was a blessing, of course. Uh, happy to expand on my talents and just be on another show and just show range and be able to give you know what i'm saying and tell raw authentic stories true stories of beautiful black women i ain't gonna lie my alter ego is a stripper my alter ego is a stripper so just happy to be able to step into in, in, into a face of me that nobody has seen um but i'm happy i'm blessed so auditions wasn't a problem then since your alter egos ironically enough i did not have to audition for this role 
I was yeah, blessed. I, mean, I got the offer. That's not even ironic. I was like, ooh, okay. I thought they might have told you to make a couple moves, like, you know. Nah, they was like, we seen you before. We know what you can do. I was like, uh, okay. I don't think anybody know what you can do yet, but we're going to see as your career folks, because you got a lot. Thank ahead you. of you. Keep on doing your thing. We'll keep on cheering. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Yeah, Thank you. Big fans. So good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Watch what the fuck you going. I ain't see you. <laughs> I don't see why not. <laughs> we haven't met each other properly. Mm. We might not have met each other proper, but I know enough about you. These walls been whispered. Hey, hey, be careful about them whispers. They ain't always well acquainted with the truth. Could you leave tomorrow? What make you think of that? <laughs> These walls got ears, mouths too. I'm here with Miss Miracle Watts. How you feel? I mean, this season is turned up. It starts off with a car wash scene that's turned up. How, how do you think the audience is going to react to to this season? Once they see it? I think they're going to be super excited about it. Like, who hasn't been waiting for P-Valley? So, yeah, yeah, it's going to be an exciting thing to watch. How, how was, like, getting into the, the, the dance and scenes and all that stuff was, like, because I'm not sure... Uh, when your miracle happened, like, were you, did you have to do any performances while you were? Okay. I had, you know, we had the paint, so I had to do a little shimmy here, a little shimmy there, but, I mean, I'm not the best dancer, but I did it, so. <laughs> I made it happen. You made it happen? Yes. Okay, like, last question, Katori Hall, having a, a black creator or a showrunner telling, like, this story that might have never happened otherwise, like, how does it feel to be there? A part of it. I'm so happy that Katori chose me. I feel like she fought for me to get this role. And I mean, it's just super exciting. It's such an honor to work with a black woman. So yeah, it's a blessing. Appreciate it. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Miracle. Hey, girl. Beautiful. Congratulations. How you doing? Jamal Finkley, how you doing? Good, I'm doing good, I'm Dan. So this, this season's interesting. I mean, y'all cover so many issues in this. I mean, it's, there's, there's land ownership, there's politics. Um, I think legacy is part of it. Uh, how, does it how does it feel like to represent this region and this story that touches on so many things that's not anywhere else on TV and never been done? I, I, you, I think you hit on something right there. There's nothing else like this show. And so I can thank Tory Hall for bringing this to light because everybody deserves to get their story told, represented. And obviously, living in a country like ours where it's the most diverse country in the world, there are so many stories to tell. So thank you to Katori Hall for helping bring that. But at times it is overwhelming, but it's also, I just feel grateful to be a part of something as impactful, as groundbreaking as Pete Alley. So I'm just, I'm just excited to be here. I feel I, I feel like your character's a little bit villainous, and I want to know: is, is it fun to like to be able to play villainous to, to a certain extent? Not saying that it's you know. No, I, I you're not the first person to say to use the word villain to describe Corbin, and we are all fighting for something in our lives, right? And we use different tactics to be able to fight for those things, you know. And some of those things are defined as villainous, or you know. But I. I think that's what it, that's what's fun for me is the fighting for. Katori's created such a great, just a, a, a great found foundation for discovery and for driving, going for something a, as a not only as a as, as an actor myself, but taking on a character like Corbin because he is very multi-layered. And this season we get to see some of these things kind of expand. We get to see, see more about his backstory and how he fights for what he's fighting for. So I think regardless of what character Katori Hall creates, I, I, I think it's fun. I, I think anything she'd come up with is, would, would be amazing. So for the audience, a lot more is revealed about, about Corbin. But I, I wonder, like, when you take on that character, is that did you already know this full backstory, or does the writer room develop other stuff about it that you have to take on? Like when you go into it, do you know everything about your character? Are you learning 
just as an audience, so to speak. It, you know, you know everything about yourself. No. Yeah, exactly. We all, there are things that we discover daily. Um, and again, I'll give, give it up to Katori. She's created these full, full characters. And sometimes I do have a question and about, you know, about where Corbin was, where he is, where he will be. And she does a great job of kind of giving you little bits of information to be able to grow. But I think in this story, seeing people discover things in the moment or throughout an arc of a season is like, that's the most incredible thing. And so I, I, I don't know everything about Corbin. He, I, I'm still learning about him just like I'm still learning about myself. Uh, but I can tell you I'm grateful to be on that journey in Pea Valley and outside of Pea Valley. For sure. Well, thank you for the time, Dan. Appreciate it. Great to meet you. Thank you so much. Take care. Um, I'm here with Miss Catherine Busby, that's head of uh, original program at Stars. Uh, how does it feel to like be here this day where we have showrunners like Katori and and creators all over like East and all these black people creating stories that we didn't see decades past and to be a part of that. You know what? Nothing but pride and gratitude that we can finally tell our stories and having someone like Katori Hall is having someone like David Simon. The way that she writes characters, the, the nuance and the 360 of it all and taking us into a world that we wouldn't even know about. So honestly, I feel blessed. I feel uh, uh, lucky. I feel excited. I've seen all of these episodes. I can't wait for, I'm sorry, I can't wait for everyone to see it. It's yeah. really, season two is deep and it's beautiful and uh, it's a good time for television. Thank you for your time. Keep on doing your thing. And Thank you. Thanks for saying hi. <laughs>